And this morning, we're diving into post-election analysis. And here with me now is reporter Kyle Ingram with the News and Observer. Kyle, welcome back. Thanks for having me. So once again, North Carolina proving to be split pretty much down the line when it comes to the presidential race. What is the thinking behind that? Why is that? Uh, splitting the ticket, it's something that's going on in North Carolina very often. Um, we saw it with the governor's race where voters voted for Donald Trump, a Republican for president, but they voted for Mark Robinson, or, I mean, uh, for Josh Stein, a uh, Democrat for governor. And this is something that a lot of people will point to as Mark Robinson's campaign being plagued by a scam scandal. Uh, it's a reason people didn't want to support him, but it's also something that isn't unique to the governor's race. This time around, when you look down ballot, people voted for five Republicans for the Council of State and five Democrats for the Council of State. People split their ballots all the way up and down, and this isn't just this election. This happens almost every election in North Carolina in recent history. People vote for a Republican for president and Democrat for governor. Speaking of which, so we'll have a Democratic governor again, and we'll have a majority Republican legislature. What is that going to mean in terms of policies and budgets getting passed in the next session? Yeah, so the last legislative session, Republicans had a supermajority, and they were able to get through pretty much all of the conservative policy that they were interested in because they could override the governor's veto. But now that they're one vote short, most likely, pending some potential recounts of a supermajority in the House, they may have to temper some of those uh, priorities because the governor could actually stop them with a veto. However, uh, the way supermajorities work in the legislature is it's not a supermajority of the entire legislature. It's a supermajority of the legislature that shows up on that day. Oh. So it could be an attendance game where if they see that some Democrats are missing, they could actually go through with an override. And we've seen that kind of thing happen before. The well, last question, how did voter patterns from this year's election compare to what we saw, say, in 2020? Yeah, uh, you saw, you know, Donald Trump has won the state three times. Um, and this time he went with his same pattern as before. He's driving out rural voters. He ate away at Democrats' lead in metropolitan counties like Mecklenburg, Durham, and Wake. What you also saw this time around that was interesting was Donald Trump made a lot of appeals to Western North Carolina, talking about the impact of Hurricane Helene, saying that the federal government's response was inadequate. And you saw Western North Carolina come out in droves to support him. Uh, in some of these counties that were really hard hit by the hurricane, there were more voters, more voter turnout than there was in 2020, and they voted for Trump. Wow, fascinating developments. All right, that is Kyle Ingram with the News and Observer. We appreciate you being here. You can read more of this analysis right now on the NNO website or in Sunday's paper.